Welcome to Will Cook Music Reviews. I'm Will Cook, and this is a big deal. I do not take this lightly. We have reached the top 10 songs of my 2020. The songs in my top 100 all mean a lot to me, and to make it into the, the top 10, you have to be something extra special. And I can look at this list and be proud of the songs that will ultimately define the best of my year with music in 2020. Would you look at that, Everything Everything has done it again. Their latest album, Reanimator, marked my third album with the UK band, and just like the two before it, it gave me a top 10 song of the year. Their song, Regret, was my number nine song of 2015. Good Shot, Good Soldier was my number one of 2017. And now we have In Bird Song taking the number 10 spot of 2020. It was the lead single released back in April, and it wasn't originally intended to be the lead single. It's the longest song of the album, slow and lacking much pop flavor like some of the later singles. But frontman Jonathan Higgs said it was the most appropriate song to reappear with during the changing times we found ourselves in with the pandemic. The song is about hearing bird song, and he said that with fewer cars and planes and with less human intervention in general, we've been given more time to connect with resurgent nature and where we all are for this moment. And the song does a wonderful job at creating that sensation of floating over nature undisturbed by anything else, but there is an eerie presence to it, I find. The chorus of there's something in the white matter, someone in the white matter, feels pretty ominous. The song builds up these synths around Higgs' incredible vocals, one of the strongest vocal performances of the year, and then the synths hit that piercing distorted level as the song hits its peak of intensity right towards the 345 mark. I find it very worthwhile to turn the song up as it builds into that moment just to add to the incredible wave of sound. It's short-lived, it doesn't give you too much time to ride that wave of bliss, but ultimately, I find this is a new venture for everything, everything, and it takes me to this world that separates itself from anything else I heard this year. I can't believe I am talking about Faded Paper Figures in 2020. This was a one-off band for me that I was introduced to sometime after their 2008 debut album, Dynamo, which I absolutely loved for its soft, catchy, indie, electro-pop style. But they slipped away from my radar over time, and it wasn't until this year that I reconnected with them on their latest album. They're still the same band I remember, but with a bit more of a all-encompassing synth structure, less focus on the bass and the guitar work and I was a bit disappointed at first but they show the true heights of this sound with all that we feel. It's built around these wobbly in and out synths with soft 808s, the lightest of acoustic guitar. It creates a meditative atmosphere that slides into this enchanting chorus that really works its magic with a back and forth between the male and female co-vocalists. How long will I miss you? How long until you remember I'm always there? It's like he's calling out for his lost love and she is echoing back her response. It's got this this beautiful sadness to it and also just a super smooth chill environment to really soothe the ears It did not take much to realize that this would be a top tier song of 2020. Released back in September, this is one of the most recent additions to my year to make it this high on my top 100. This Cali indie pop band is most well known for their 2017 single High, which doesn't sound much like this song. Pretty much sounds like a new band to me. And yeah, I knew after a couple of listens that this was the best thing that I'd heard from them. It is a stomping beat with one of the most uplifting and refreshing hooks of the year. It was a consideration for my number one spot. It just does exactly what I want in an alternative pop song. 
It gives me a beautiful sing-along from the witty and full verses to the unforgettable chorus. You get those rolling drum fills in there, and the overall pacing of the song just follows that real nice walking rhythm. And the message of the song, it's like he's lived out the American dream, but I opened up my heart and found a spiritual void. The song feels like it has him trying to find that spiritual connection, and it has that power in its hook to make me feel like I'm on some sort of spiritual journey myself. One of the first songs that I felt certain would make my top 10, this Canadian indie pop group released their sophomore album in the summer, and they absolutely captivated me with this heartbreaker of a song. It holds a serene beauty to it that nothing else this year can touch. Vocalist Katie Munshaw sings beautifully with this wistful taste to her words about watching her friends move out of town, start families, and become adults while she plays in her local band, works the night shift. I'm just stuck in this town I can't handle watching you light it up. It is a fabulously stunning and awe-inspiring chorus that is just so entirely special to me. Declan really did it with this one. The young UK artist is a prodigy, there is no doubt about it, and he has provided the best rock song of 2020 with the key to life on earth. The way he writes about youth in suburban London and the way that people interact with each other is brilliant. He ties his words together over a tight, bouncy beat and has me following along with every note. And the chorus is an absolute anthem, massively infectious and intelligent, like there's a, a real maturity in his songwriting. It's a fun song, it's bright and driven, and it is thoughtful and tasteful, and you, you can't deny it's provided one of the most memorable hooks of the year. You have to hear this song. I hope you live a wonderful life, but you're finished living under my skin. I don't listen to much rap, but Watsky is a rapper that I cannot take my eyes off of. He came to my attention years ago with this Pale Kid Raps Fast video, and I've been following him ever since. I am definitely not crazy about a lot of his stuff, but he has managed to seriously impress me in the past, and I would say this is the most impressed I've ever been with him. He's teamed up with this artist by the name of Raquel Rodriguez, and she brings a beautiful, beautiful presence to the song with her backing vocal additions. And Watsky tends to have some fun with his songs and his lyrics, but not with this one. It's been suggested that it could be about the poor relationship he's had with his twin brother, and I can definitely see that. All you have to do is listen to the first verse to see that this song is directed towards someone. Every word he says on this has me hooked. Each verse better than the last, leading to this final rap that increases in speed to the point where he has to catch his breath and then he keeps hitting you with this amazing rap that is so, so emotional, but also a hell of a fun time to try to rap along to. It was my number four most streamed song of the year because I just kept playing it on repeat, singing along until I could pretty much keep up with him. He created an absolute masterpiece with this song. Pop punk bands take note of this song because this is how you do it. Knuckle Puck is not the only band out there to balance their sound between two vocalists, but I would say that this is the best executed shared vocals pop punk song that I have ever heard. The two singers, Joe Taylor and Nick Casasanto, don't even sound that different, and I would not blame you for, for not noticing that there's two different guys singing on this track, but the music video definitely gives it away, and this was the video of the year for me. No other music video in 2020 had me coming back as much as this one did, at least until I discovered my number two song on the countdown, but I'll, I'll get to that one later. There's something so incredibly unique about the way they just stand there with their arms at their side while they sing that has me hooked. It seemed awkward at first, but it's just part of the video's unique pull. 
The guys bounce back and forth through the verses and each line has me holding on to it for its brief moment in the song like I can't get enough. It's part of the reason why I would legit play this song on repeat just to soak up every last bit of it. And the icing on top, they feature the legendary Derek Sanders of Mayday Parade in the bridge, which is great. And the big hook shows off some wicked guitar and just carries all the best qualities of an uplifting pop punk song. The final three begins with my number one most streamed song of 2020, Into Happiness. Now, I'll be honest, this song may be featured on a 2020 album, but it actually was released as a single all the way back in mid-2019, and I'm sure I would have caught it. I do not let anything from Fantogram slide by me, but somehow it got lost along the way through 2019, and I had completely forgot about it when I went into their album here in 2020. And I did not like the album all that much, but this song stood out to me pretty instantly as not only the best song of the album, but the best song of Fantogram's career. And I was pissed to find out that it was a 2019 single, but hey, it's on a 2020 album, and I could not let it go by without giving it the attention it deserves. It takes the bronze medal for my year with music in 2020, and it was my most streamed song, because first off, I am an absolute sucker for the drum beat, which had me drumming along many times. Do, do, do. And if you've listened to anything I've had to say about these other songs, you know it's about that hook for me. And the hook to this song carries a feeling of sublime perfection that is on a level of its own. Fall into happiness are the big words from Sarah Barthel, and they hold some extra weight knowing that she lost her sister to suicide in 2016. So yeah, this song is more than a good beat and a big hook to me. It's a song of recovery and coping while still holding this longingness to it that just adds to the, to the weight of it all. I couldn't help it, I just had to have this song right up at the top, even though it's one of the most recent additions to my top 100, maybe the most recent. Now this song came out all the way back in February, but I didn't catch on to this Canadian metal band until about mid-October, when Rise Records shared a post about them. I saw they were from Victoria, BC, a city very close to home for me, having spent plenty of time there throughout my childhood, and I was just so stoked to see a BC band signed to one of my favorite labels. And then I listened to the latest single at the time, Holy Roller, and I was just floored by how heavy they were. The screams coming from vocalist Courtney LaPlante had me absolutely stunned, so I immediately began to dig into their older stuff, which led me to Blessed Be. Now, while I admired the brutal screams, this song is much more pop-driven and a primarily clean-sung song, uh, appealing much more to my tastes. I heard the song a couple times through the headphones, probably on my way to work or something, but it was when I sat down and watched the music video for it not too long ago, like literally when I was starting to put together my year-end list. That is when I discovered the true power of the song. It gave me a viewing and listening listening experience unmatched by any song this year. The power a video can have on a song plays a big role in my overall experience with it, and I can't say exactly where this song would fall for me if it wasn't for that visual experience. But video aside, the song holds a disgustingly juicy prog sounding bass, the guitar shreds, and it's got this gorgeous and, and slightly frightening atmosphere to it. And the chorus, while I mentioned this being much more pop leaning than some of their heavier stuff, it's still backed by a crashing heavy delivery, and you get this tragic and mesmerizing display from Courtney. And when the song quiets down after the second chorus, you can feel it coming, and honestly, it is chilling when it hits that breakdown, and Courtney unleashes her demonic screams. The song takes on a whole new form before leading itself back into one hell of a rewarding final hook. I know it's got the recency bias, but I think back to how these other songs impacted me, and really nothing else hit me quite as hard as this song. As crazy intense and beautiful as that Spirit Box song is, it wasn't the song that I wanted, 
at the top spot for my 2020. I'd like to finish the countdown on a bit of a lighter note, a song that has brought me the most positivity and good vibes and all around enjoyment of 2020 and nothing ticks off those boxes better than Bodies. Both of these artists were on my top 100 of last year. The Knox came onto my radar when they teamed up with a band called Great Good Fine OK for the song Lucky Me, which has gone down as one of the greatest party pop songs I've ever heard. And Muna, I've been keeping an eye on them for several years. They had two songs in my top 20 of last year, Number One Fan and Stay Away, the latter landing at number five on the list. So I was excited to see the Knox take on Muna for this summer single and they came out with something that completely outdid any expectations I had. It sets up a dreamy nighttime feel with the sound of crickets in the distance as Muna's Katie Gavin begins to sing with her warm and strong voice. The beat begins to rise no different than your standard EDM track, but the drop it falls into is something brilliantly fresh and invigorating. And then it drops again and Katie begins to sing the hook, Your body on man, body and mind. Bodies in the basement. It is one hell of a rush. You get the second verse, the beat builds again, yada yada, but this time the build up leads right to the sung hook part from Katie, stripping away the beat for a fabulously rewarding sing along moment, and then it snaps back into the EDM breakdown for a moment that I could just imagine being an absolute rager on the dance floor. It leads back into the sung hook again, this time with the beat to accompany it, before moving into the stupidly catchy outro and then getting out of there, leaving me feeling the effects of the release that this song delivers. During a summer where concerts ceased to exist, it was this song that had me feeling the closest to being in that crowd with hundreds of others losing it to the incredible rush of music. I never thought I would have an EDM track as my number one of the year, but it's the feeling that counts, and this one did it better than any other in 2020. And there you have it, that concludes my top 100 songs of 2020. I know there was a lot of talking on my part, and I do not expect anyone to sit through all of this. But it provides me an outlet to voice my thoughts on my favorite music, and if you're able to connect with my opinion on any of these songs or find something new to take away, then, then I'm happy. And you can find the Spotify playlist to my top 100 linked in the description below. I've got a big playlist of honorable mentions linked below as well. So thanks so much for checking this out. I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed what you saw. Hit the subscribe, I've got more on the way. I'm looking forward to new music in 2021 and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to chat. I'll see you next time.